Alright, haulers. Hello and welcome to Farming Simulator 2019 Beaver Creek Edition. And I say edition, that's just the map we're using, is what it is. But anyone who's been here or seen my channel in the past knows that at one point I tried to get started uh, on a map that was, uh, I want to say Black Mountain, Montana, something like that. Uh, which was farming, logging, mix, stuff like that. However, I decided to try and do something different. I've had a lot of requests for FS19 over the last few weeks. Uh, and it's a game I really, really want to do. It's probably the most challenging game to record on in terms of mods and stuff like that. Uh, but here we are. So we're going to actually go ahead. We're going to hop right in our truck. You can't really see it, but we have a uh, 3500 here with a nice... Uh, why am I having a complete stroke? A nice bed on it. There we go. That's what I was trying to find. We'll go ahead, hop in, start her up, so we can head over to our equipment storage. And we'll go ahead, get our lights on, we'll turn our high beams on too, since it is very, very late. Or actually very, very early, I should say. Uh, obviously, being in the north, it doesn't get, or at least this time of the year, uh, it's not getting very bright out very fast. It is 6 a.m., so not bad. But we will make our way over, and while we're doing that, I will explain to you what's happening. So, I, uh, I've been searching for a map, uh, I wanted to find a, a farm sim map that we could play on, that we could have a good experience on, uh, enjoy playing, but that would offer something different than most of the other creators are focused on. And obviously when, you know, you're saying, okay, I wanted, personally, I wanted to do logging. I'm, there's two things that were on the top of my list. One, the ability to kind of build out the way I want to build out, uh, and set up farms and stuff freely. Uh, through the use of whether it's a landscaping tool or whatever, uh, but also the ability to do a ton of logging and have a sawmill. Uh, I really wanted a sawmill, and I discovered this map, Beaver Creek, which hit, which is made by Honor Realism uh, from the RGC. Uh, I think he's. I think he. I don't know if he runs it or what, but uh, he's under the Realistic Gaming crew, uh, and. So, I decided to hop on and try it. I was skeptical at first, but I'm on the smaller version too. Uh, as far as I know, there's a 4X version of the map coming. Uh, however, I'm on like the standard size, and here we are coming onto our property. But, uh, I discovered this map, and it's basically exactly what I was looking for. Uh, there's a few little glitches here and there that have to be worked out, or a few little problems, whether it's with little uh, pieces like the gate at the shipyards, because this is a port-based area. Uh, or things like that. Um, <clears throat> wow, I'm, it is probably going to be very, very dark for you guys, so I do apologize. Hopefully the sun will come up pretty quick. Uh, we will do that, just to uh, kind of accelerate that, hopefully. Uh, we're going to go ahead and actually back in here. And get parked up. Because what we're going to do is we're going to park up, and then we can go ahead and uh, grab our UTV and actually head up to the job site which you can see there behind us. I'm going to go ahead and put my rear-facing lights on, which apparently... Uh-oh. Nope, they're on. They just don't exist in the mirrors. Okay, that's uh, a slightly added problem. So what we're just going to do, screw it, I'm just going to go in the outside view, and we're just going to back in this way so that I make sure I don't hit anything. Uh, but... But the reason that I picked this map... Uh, for a playthrough is because it offers a huge area. We're going to hit our mirror, I think, so we're going to come back out. Uh, it offers a huge, huge area for logging, and the whole premise of the map uh, appears to be that you clear the area for agriculture. There's only a few little spots, so if you wanted to start farming, you could, uh, but this is kind of the perfect map to kind of clear an area and uh, get started that way. We'll go ahead and shut down here. Uh, and we'll take a peek here real quick. I just want to finish kind of explaining kind of what the my thought process is here. Uh, and we'll take a look at the map too. Obviously, oh, autosave. Uh, I've gone through and purchased all the land and equipment ahead of time. Uh, and not necessarily intentionally. This is actually like the fifth or sixth time I've tried recording this series. And mostly because I had to tear through my mod list and really remove a ton of them. There is something that was conflicting, and I couldn't figure out what it was, and had a ton of issues with crashing and stuff like that. So that might be why this episode is actually a little bit delayed. Uh, so, obviously, we'll see. But we own this portion up here. Uh, the house that we just came from is a summer house uh, that we're actually, or a, 
a lodge type of thing, uh, like a, a camp uh, that we're actually renting from a local. Obviously, you've got a field here, a field here, a field here. This is actually a little farming property with animals and stuff like that. We don't own any of that or over here, so we can't really touch that. However, we are working with the locals, uh, particularly with town officials and uh, environmental officials, to go through, and we're actually going to clear out almost the entirety of this. All of this we're going to clear out. And there's a few huge projects that we've got to, to kind of work on. Obviously, we're going to be building new infrastructure, new roads, uh, potentially new areas for uh, housing or stuff like that. Uh, is that stuff that I'm going to be looking at uh, that will be a big thing uh, and then other than that obviously the clearing and then they would love to add in more for, uh, farmlands and stuff like that uh, so we'll have a few areas dedicated to uh, continual regrowth of trees obviously we're not going to clear the, to the whole map from top to bottom I know that would be a lot of fun uh, but we're not going to be doing that uh, we are going to be leaving some areas that can be replanted and regrown and stuff like that. But a lot of this area is going to get turned into land for agriculture and stuff like that. And obviously working with environmental officials just to make sure that any species of animal is protected and is okay. And we've gotten the all clear to go ahead and do it as everything's been taken care of. And uh, basically other than that, uh, our biggest threat is time and the weather. Uh, obviously, it is springtime. Normally, we'd probably wait till fall, winter, when the ground starts to freeze to really head out and do a lot of cutting uh, and stuff like that. Uh, but we're, we have just, it's just me. Uh, we only have myself for now. So we have a lot of work to go ahead and get done. Quickly, just before we go over to the main site of the actual sawmill, we'll take a look here. So obviously, we have a little Polaris UTV. Uh, we have a Freightliner dump truck, which also has plow mounting capabilities, so hopefully this winter uh, we can throw a plow on there if we need it. However, we did bring, home, uh, bring over our Fisher plow for the 3500. We have a Massey Ferguson telehandler. I don't remember what the model num uh, numbers are for all this equipment, so I do apologize. Uh, but that, uh, that piece of equipment, the telehandler, is a multi-purpose tool for the actual sawmill itself. We decided to go with that. Uh, because not only do we have the forks for it, but we have a bucket. So it can do basically every job that the sawmill needs to do. And the extended reach means that we can stack product and uh, move it a lot easier, which is really, really nice, uh, rather than a forklift. Uh, and it can also handle a little more capacity. It can carry a little more, which is nice, too. And then over here, we do have the six, uh, 6250R uh, John Deere. It is outfitted with a front loader, so we do have it if we need to. And we also brought over a three-point... Uh, stump grinder and a winch we don't really use this too much uh, I will probably I would like to at some point once we make enough money uh, be able to purchase a skid steer and get that in here to do most of our stump grinding because uh, it's really fast really easy to get in and out of areas and clear out huge swaths it's just a little bit expensive and we really don't have the money for it obviously I could buy it but we'd be pushing it because we have a couple of beasts here so we have this John Deere skidder uh, again, I don't remember what the model number is, so do forgive me. And we do have a blade for it too, all that stuff for use over at the site. And then we did bring over our Beaver Creek service trailer, so we do have uh, capabilities to actually work on equipment and store fuel at the same time, uh, which that's going to be the other concern. That's part of why I'm holding off on, on spending a lot, because the two pieces of main forestry equipment that we have, the two John Deere pieces of equipment, uh, we have a feller buncher and the skidder, are gas guzzlers, uh, in this case diesel guzzlers. So we'll go over and uh, actually check that out. Whoops. Let's go ahead and start up the UTV. He's running nice. We'll go ahead and pull out and then shut the uh, the doors here because we won't really need to uh, come back for a little bit. Let's see if we can get out of here without hitting anything. Nice and easy. I love this little thing and uh, the reason we brought this over was to kind of help move some stuff around. We'll leave the lights in there on for right now. That's okay. Uh, but we brought this over to kind of help move stuff around and to kind of get back and forth to the job sites and stuff like that. It's just a really nice little piece of equipment to have on hand and uh, to be able to use. And my hope for this morning here is that we'll actually get to work on some of the wooded areas and clearing this out. And uh, off to our left here is going to be where we start. We're actually going to be going to get the feller buncher to actually start cutting this down. Uh, actually, I, I say that there's actually two things we need to do. First is cleaning up around the sawmill first. Uh, we, we purchased the land and the sawmill from a previous owner who had shut it down. 
we were able to get a crew over that got the whole thing refurbished, got some lights in, got that stuff. But there's still some trees and stuff that are concerning that need to be brought down. So we're going to be working on that. You can see there to the right, that's where we feed in all the logs, uh, in through the river. And then off the left here, we can see the feller buncher. Again, I don't remember, I want to say 909M or something like that. I don't remember. It does have a nice head on it. And uh, Yeah, 909M. And so that's what we're going to be using for most of the cutting. You can see here we've already produced some uh, some lawn boards and uh, smaller pieces of wood for uh, miscellaneous use. And that's where all this stuff gets stored to be uh, shipped out. Uh, and then over here on the other side is where we have all of our fuel management and wood chips. So this, this plant actually runs off of wood chips, which is really nice because it's partially self-sufficient. Uh, to the left there, it actually outputs chips and to the right, uh, it intakes uh, for fuel so we can we can kind of help feed it itself and then any excess we can actually sell off or store for heating this winter and uh, in addition to that we do have a chipper so we can go through and chip all the little pieces of crappy logs however most of the lumber we can just put right through as is since it'll get chopped up anyways and, and uh, left over there and the crew that we brought over to actually refurb this place put in a really nice auger system so we can actually fill trailers uh, without having to use a, a bucket loader, but that's probably going to be what we use. And for right now, the main use is going to be the telehandler. We actually have a bucket for the telehandler over here somewhere uh, to be able to use with that. So that's kind of the layout of the whole area. And we'll come right over here and uh, jump onto the actual feller buncher and see about getting started. Uh, but yeah, like I said, that's kind of the lay of the land. That's how everything's going. Uh, our main priority right now is going to be clearing areas, getting that stuff set up. We should probably turn our headlights off before we uh, kill the battery in this thing. But we'll go ahead and jump in here. And uh, I've never actually operated a piece of equipment like this, so it will take me a little bit of time probably to get used to the controls. Let's go ahead, actually, let's take a look over here. So you can see here we've got this tree here kind of leaning, pretty dead. Uh, we've got a couple over here that I would like to clean up. Maybe that one next to the bridge, because we don't want to have anything coming down on the bridge. Maybe that one over there, but it seems to be okay for right now. Obviously, a lot of them in this river are pretty nasty. Uh, I'm not really worried about those guys. Most of the guys on the other side seem to be okay, too. Uh, my biggest concern is some of the stuff over here that could fall in equipment or uh, damage some other stuff. I mean, you can see that one there is already leaning, so we're probably going to take down those three there. Uh, at least this one, maybe. There's another one that seems to be kind of leaning over there. I don't think we can actually get to that one. That one's way over on the other side here. Yeah, this one's going to be tough to get to just because of the area. But we can literally just dump them right into the pond and feed the sawmill, which is really, really nice. Uh, just to kind of kickstart that. But we'll go ahead and jump right in here. Alright, let's go ahead and get this thing up and running. There we go. And you can see... Oh, uh, you can see there we have the nice C100, I think it's a C100, cutting head from the fellows over at FDR uh, Incorporated. Some really, really nice equipment. They actually helped us get set up with the, uh, the John Deere, so that is very awesome. I'm very glad to have this, and uh, I look forward to getting some more equipment from them soon. However, like I said, I have no experience in this yet, so... Uh, We'll probably start down bottom with some of the easier stuff and then come back and actually cut that. I'd like to start with this one here so that if I screw up, it'll dump the uh, the log, not me, hopefully. Go ahead and raise this up here a little bit. And uh, some of you guys who have followed me for a long time know that I'm actually, uh, I am a Mainer, a Mainer, uh, preferably. That's what everyone likes to call it. Uh, I was, whoops. I was born and raised in the state of Maine, and uh, obviously up here logging is a huge industry, so I've definitely been raised around it, and uh, it is very much something that interests me. Let's go ahead and open the uh, the teeth here, and uh, see if we can't actually cut something down. Oh, this is going to be interesting. Oh, uh-oh. Well, so that's a problem. I didn't actually catch it. The uh, joystick locked up on me, so a little bit of technical difficulties with this thing. Obviously, like I said, it is my first time. We do have the winch too, so I'm not really concerned. We can uh, we can just grab that and uh, drag that out. 
should be okay. But let's come up here, maybe. Let's see about something different. Yeah, I don't know why, but, uh, at least... Oh, are we stuck? Uh-oh. Well, part of the problem is that I need to actually change the, uh, the boom here. So let me go ahead and get myself out of here, and then we will come back. There we go, that's more like it. So we'll go ahead and just bring this thing right down here. And, uh, drop it in. Hopefully nice and easy. Ooh, we don't want to tilt back. Whoa, let's calm down here, sir. We'll go ahead and just, uh, dump that right in there nice and easy. That's more like how it should go. Uh, for whatever reason, I'm just, it's taking me some time to actually, okay, we're kind of, kind of stuck here. Let me, uh, get this thing pulled in nice and tight, and, uh, we can actually get ourselves situated here. The toughest part is I'm actually working with just one joystick. I don't have two, so I am trying to get used to it, especially having never used one in my life. So that's awesome. And uh, hopefully I can get a second one here pretty quick so I can actually improve on some of this stuff. But we'll make our way out of here. And that's one done. The facility should, if I'm not mistaken, be up and running. And if it's not, then it's because we're out of fuel, so we can just grab some more fuel. There are supposed to be lights on it. I don't see any of them flashing, so I don't think it's actually running, but that's okay. Uh, let's see if we can come in here and potentially grab this one without actually damaging uh, our lights here. That's my that's my concern right now. Can't really see the tracks either, which is kind of making life a little difficult. There we go. That should be a good spot to uh, to grab the thing. We'll go ahead and open the jaws, get ourselves set up here. There we go. And I think we have this one too, so we'll try and slowly come out of here without hitting the actual post. So not bad, so we're getting the area kind of nice and cleaned up, which is awesome. Obviously I have to be a little careful and a little slow here so we don't tip ourselves over. But we're gonna actually try and carry this down here, hopefully. Oh. Nice and easy, and we will drop this thing right in. Oop, gotta pick up a little bit. Nice and easy. And, uh, we can go ahead and actually drop this thing in now. And there we go. So we'll, uh, I guess what we'll do is, I think that's it. We now have to fix the little mistake I made with dropping the other one. So we might have to see about, uh, well... Maybe we can grab it out with the actual head on this thing. Let's go ahead and let's give that a try. I don't have any uh, grapple heads for it. Uh, I would like to get a second loader at some point with a grapple head on it. But there is potential we might be able to just grab this as it is. Let's uh, go ahead and extend this out. And obviously having just the one joystick, I can only do one movement at a time. Which kind of makes life a little more difficult. Oh, I think we might actually have it. Let's see if we can, uh, maybe get out of here with it. Can we pick it up? Yep, we have it. There we go. Oh, she's dead, so she's nice and light, but not quite enough that it's not giving us any sort of a problem here. So let's just nice and easy back right out. Hopefully not catch the boom. I'm definitely watching the boom here. We're gonna look at coming in here a little more. Oh, she wants to, she wants to go. There we go, there we go, that's better. Now, we should be able to just dump her right in and be good to go. And there we go, boom, fix that, awesome. So yeah. Now we, uh, now our biggest issue is just that we have the stumps, uh, to deal with, but that's not really a huge issue. Obviously we can fix that pretty easily once we get a chance to. But yeah, that's for the most part all cleaned up. Uh, I think we've just got the one more here on this side that I was looking at taken out, and then we can actually head down to the other side and look at, uh, accomplishing some bigger cuts. I would like to grab the telehandler as well and actually get the facility up and running while we're over there taking care of that. And like I said, 
obviously some of you guys might have more experience than I do. This is literally my first time ever sitting in the seat of this thing and uh, running it, so do bear with me in that, and obviously only having one joystick again makes a bit of a difference. So hopefully we can uh, see about getting right up underneath this. There we go. Beautiful. Come out here nice and slowly with it. And we will take it down and drop it in. Obviously, you can see here it's sucking fuel too. Whoops. Oops, I think I've gotten myself in a bit of a pickle here. I can't actually see where the tracks are. There we go. I think that's straight. Yeah, that's the one thing about this piece of equipment is... It's hard to see the actual tracks. I'd like to get a, a better piece of equipment here soon. I, I'm a die-hard John Deere guy, which is mainly why I'm using this feather buncher. Also, it's it's one that I've actually uh, been able to deal with in real life, which is awesome. Uh, but it's definitely it has its challenges. Some of these smaller feather bunchers, they're awesome, but uh, like I said, they all have their challenges. Whoops, we gotta watch out here. Let's see if we can swing the other way without hitting anything. Mm. Oh, we do have one more tree there, too, I didn't see. So we'll actually come down here and grab that one. Take care of that real quick. We've got to be careful here, because I don't want to hit the bridge, obviously. Oh, a little bit of uh, stutter there from the tracks, I think. Okay, we're a little bit far here. I wanted to just drive into it, but I think I'm going to end up going up onto the bridge. Oh, we actually caught the head on it there, so that's going to be part of the problem. Let's go ahead and actually extend out this way. See if we can't uh, twist a little bit here and get into a better position for the head. Hopefully we can get into it and grab it, but we'll have to see. There we go. Definitely fighting us. I think the uh, the base of it, we were so close to the bridge. I might have clipped a little bit of bark off of the bridge, but that's okay. We actually have the log now, so we're in good shape. And whoops, we don't want to tilt back. We'll go ahead and drop it right down and uh, be good to go. Beautiful. I am very, very happy with this. I love this piece of machinery. Obviously, the biggest challenge is just the learning and getting used to it. Uh, but other than that, I mean, it's it's a beautiful piece of equipment. It works just as I was told it would, and uh, overall, I'm, I'm very, very happy with it. The only thing about this is just being able to see the tracks is a little more difficult, keeping, uh, no pun intended, keeping track of where they are. Uh, let's see if I can spin here, maybe get an eye on them. There we go, so that's, that's straight there for the most part. Uh, let's make sure we come out and around so we don't hit the actual bridge but now we're going to be heading across the bridge back over to the other facility and while we're over there we will be grabbing the telehandler real quick to clear out some of the actual facility so of the actual sawmill uh, and actually to hopefully feed it with some new chips to actually get it running that's kind of what we need to do next so uh I will get this thing into a position, grab the telehandler, and be back in just a minute. Alright, and there we go. So we've gone ahead, we've pulled the telehandler out of the storage building. I am going to shut the lights off for the day, and we'll shut the door, because we obviously don't want to have stuff getting in there while we're away. But we will run over, grab this thing, and head back over to the actual sawmill itself. So, uh... Yeah, overall, I'm really, really excited to see where this goes. I'm really, really happy to have a sawmill and to have stuff like that set up. Uh, and uh, it was nice actually getting to use that that uh, 
909M. It's a very nice piece of equipment. Definitely different than I'm used to, but it's nice to hop into it for the first time and actually try it out. And that is literally the first time I've even been in it on, regardless of on video or not. And you can see here, we've parked it on this side. We're gonna be doing some cleanup over here across the bridge. And we're actually going to be uh, clearing out some new areas to put in a couple of new roads for our site so we can get back and forth a little easier. And then as soon as we're done with that, you can see here ahead of us, the old owners had actually planted a, uh, a hole. Well, actually, we can come take a nice close look up here at it. Uh, the old owners had actually planted some of this area. You can see some of it's been cut down, some of it's been, uh, been uh, messed with, but most of it's still here from when they originally planted. So we'll probably cut all that down and then look at maybe tearing, uh, changing up the whole area into a field or something nice rather than having it all messed up. Uh, our bucket should be right over here because we only need to use it for a couple of quick little things. So we'll go ahead and switch to that. And uh, we'll drop our forks over here in the corner. Nice and out of the way. There we go. And then we will hook right up to our bucket. Very, very awesome quick release system for this bucket. We'll come right up under here. And slip into it nice and easy. Awesome. All right. Let's go ahead and grab ourselves a couple scoops of wood chips, get this thing filled up and running, and then we'll be back in just a minute. All right. And there you can see and probably hear from just how loud this facility is that we have moved over all the wood chips that it had produced. So it is now up and running. And now we are going to head over and look at pulling off some of the finished pallets here. And we'll start right here on the left side with this guy. And uh, I haven't actually used this forklift for this yet. We did use it to load some of the equipment, but I haven't pulled anything yet. So hopefully... Hopefully we can uh, do this nice and easy. Just like that. Whoops. Just want to make sure I pull back next time. And there we go. Beautiful. So we'll go ahead and uh, bring this over. And some of you who may not be familiar with me, uh, I actually have a couple of years of forklift experience in real life driving a stand-up lift. Uh, so this is not my first rodeo with it. It is obviously the first time I've really used a, a telehandler, but uh, nevertheless, still I, uh, I understand the basics of how it works. So... Uh, that adds a little bit of uh, helpfulness. Only thing is, the visibility in this thing's a little difficult. Whoops. I also have to get used to the sensitivity of the uh, the actual controls in this thing, because they're very, very different. Uh, when you drive a stand-up forklift, your joystick is actually uh, positioned... Uh, like, normally, like we can see here, this one is mounted straight down. <clears throat> Imagine if that was mounted into the wall instead, so the base was in the wall. Uh, just literally, like, if you flipped it to the left 90 degrees as it is right now, it's like that, and then you're standing, so it's to your right. And uh, that, that basically, the only things you had on it was, like, on the top of it, you would have a button to tilt back and, and tilt forward, and then uh, you would lift and you would go to the right and go to the left to actually lift and lower it. This one works a little bit differently which obviously adds a little more trouble to it. <clears throat> but it's just a learning curve, that's all it is, just gotta get used to it. Well, let's go ahead, let's get the rest of this stuff done, and then we'll be back in just a minute.
And there we go. I think that's the last of them. We'll go ahead and bring the boom in. Let's go double check, make sure there's none left. I love this telehandler, honestly. And actually using it with a joystick too makes life so much easier. Yeah, so those ones are still being produced, so those are good to go. Let's go double check, make sure that we've stacked everything nice and neat. We'll swing by on the, uh, so we can see out the, uh, left side here, because it's easier to see out of. Beautiful. It looks like that's stacked okay. Should be okay, obviously it's, it's wire framed around the outside, but... The only thing about the pallet is I probably should have spun it around the other way and stacked it from the front rather than the side, but we should be okay. It looks like that's meant to be firewood. So we've got some nice lawn wood pallets, some uh, nice firewood ready to go. And uh, hopefully once we stockpile a bit more, we'll have a, uh, we'll grab a truck to come grab it and uh, sell it off down at the port, because obviously we have to export all of it. But we will do all of that in bulk. But for now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna head over, we're gonna park this thing up. I know I'm back and forth here, sorry, but I uh, just had to sneeze here, and you guys won't hear it, because obviously I'm not gonna put that in the video, but. Uh, but yeah. So, I think that's gonna be it. Obviously, we accomplished a lot. We saw the equipment, you guys got to see the area. Uh, overall, I'm very, very pleased with this, uh, with this series, and and uh, honestly, this episode's been the smoothest, and I think because now I'm figuring out all the kinks. Uh, had a little bit of issue with the telehandler, managed to get it solved, so that's good to go. And uh, honestly, running the telehandler and having stuff go like that, and actually using the joystick and stuff, very, very awesome. Honestly, the biggest problem, and we're actually gonna jump in the Freightliner real quick and, and scooch it over because it is a little bit in the way, which we'll just do like this real quick. Man, the brakes on this thing hit hard. Trying to not hit the wall and the brakes just locked on. Yeah, we got plenty of space there, so we should be good. I just want to make sure I have enough space to get in and out with the uh, telehandler. But yeah, honestly, I love using this thing, and uh, it feels nice to uh, to hit farm sim. I'm going to kind of break the fourth wall now, so if that's not your deal, then uh, even though I've done it a little bit here and there... Um, I honestly, I'm very excited to see where this series goes. I want you guys' input on what you want to see. Uh, ideas you have, stuff like that. Modders, if you have, if you want to help out, honestly, I'd love to have modders come in, help out. Obviously, this is not going to be something I do in multiplayer with other people. This is going to be just me for right now, uh, just because running a server takes money, takes time, and uh, this is meant to be mostly just a for fun kind of a deal, uh, rather than you know some full like some some of these guys have proper logging setups and, and experience and stuff like that. And, uh, for now, this is just gonna be how we do it. Obviously, I need to, uh, fix the fork there. Oh, and that's why I wanted to park farther away. <laughs> yeah, it's... Oh, that's not a good parking job either. I'm gonna fix that, and then we'll come back. Oh, you know what? Actually, the way the steering is on this, it's two seconds to fix, so we don't even have to go anywhere. Awesome. It, it, yeah, it's so nice to be able to do that stuff. Oh, I left the, uh, well... I guess I gotta walk back. That's okay. We, uh... We have to get over there anyways to uh, do some cutting. What will probably end up happening is we'll end up cutting down most of this. Obviously, you can see all the dead trees and stuff out through here. I've been kind of considering, obviously, I want to add in a road that's easier to get out to the main access road and actually easier to get up to the site. I like having this little one here, but it is a little bit of a pain uh, to actually access. So, chances are what we'll do is, right at the end of the bridge, we'll end up cutting a road. Uh, I'll actually pull up the map here so you guys can see. Oh, that didn't really do much. Well, let's look at the big map here, then. Up here. So you can see, this is the current road we have. I would like to make uh, a road that comes out this way. I want to make this the road, and then make the entrance come out like that so that it's easier to actually access with heavy equipment and uh, semi-trucks and stuff like that, because the way that we have stuff set up right now is a little harder to use, so, so hopefully we can iron out some of the kinks, get a lot of that stuff done. Uh, obviously, I'm very excited to do that. I would also like, maybe at some point, even just to clear this out and then re just let the grass and uh, stuff grow, uh, just to have 
a little more open space and then down the road if we wanted to. Oh yeah, you can see the road over there. I mean, you never know what we can do. We'll probably end up taking this road and, and clearing it out and then seeding it so the grass will grow over it because we won't really need it. And uh, obviously I don't want to leave the area just covered in pathways and roadways and stuff like that. But I think what we're going to do is, it's about lunchtime for me, it's 1046, we've already been up most of the day, I was up about 4 or 5 or this morning, so uh, we will grab ourselves some lunch, and then in the next episode come back to the actual cutting. If you guys enjoyed the video, go ahead and leave a like, if you didn't, you know what to do. If you really, really liked it, consider subscribing, and uh, if you want to get notified every time I upload this series, or any of my others on both channels, uh, you can go ahead and either click the notification bell or join my Discord. And when you join my Discord, you get to get... You get to get... How many times do I have to say get? Uh, five? Because I gotta say it one more time. You get uh, announcements for each video in uh, my Discord for each channel. There's two separate things in my Discord for each channel. Uh, so you can do that. And also, I don't at everyone anytime I upload. So if you're one of those people like me where you don't like getting constantly battered and, and notified of stuff then you can come in and make the decision whether you want to or not, or just find it that way. And obviously, if you're in the Discord, you get to hang out with the crew, share stories, share stuff like that, and uh, just have a good time. Okay, that's very loud. We're going to come back down here towards the... Uh, excuse me, towards the Feller Buncher. And uh, yeah, if you check the description down below, you'll find a few things. You can find links to both channels. If you like simulation, then this is the place to be. Obviously, I post American Truck Sim, uh, The Hunter, Farm Sim. Got a couple new other series coming, hopefully. Well, actually, this is one, so I got one more other series coming that I'd like to, uh, I can't wait, I can't wait to share. It should come up the day after this. Yeah, uh, so you get, you find links to both channels. You can find links to my socials, at GMG on Snapchat, Insta, and, uh, Twitter. Twitter is the place to be in terms of, it's where I kind of do the most now. I used to do Snapchat more. I'm kind of switching up, but Instagram is really not the place to go. I really don't do anything there. Uh, so do keep that in mind. If you'd like to support me further, uh, obviously just by watching and liking and stuff like that, you're supporting me a ton and I really appreciate it. If you'd like to support me further, help me make this into a proper uh, career, then you can find my Patreon as well. But for now, I think it's time for me to get a snack because I can barely talk. So I will see you guys in the next one. Peace. <laughs>